Hi folks, this is Melvin from Optoproductions.com and today I'll show you a very cool module by Music Thing Modular, the Turing machine. Okay, so the Turing machine is a random CV generator. It is built around a 16-bit shift register, of which we only see the first 8 bits, indicated by the LEDs on top. The VCV module comes paired with two additional expanders, one on the left and one on the right, which we'll get to in a second. But let's focus on the main module for now. I've already connected a LFO as a clock source, and the main output is going into a quantizer, into a VCO. The large knob in the middle generates random voltages when set at noon. Fully clockwise, the loop is locked. And we can change the length of the loop with the length control over here. And if we move the random knob slightly back, we introduce some randomization, which sounds very organic and musical. I can also scale the output range with the knob over here. And if we rotate the random knob counterclockwise, we double the pattern length. And in this case the second half of the pattern has its bits inverted, so it's still related to the original 16 bits. When you've locked the loop, you can press the right 0 and right 1 button to temporarily overwrite the bit state. So now it's stuck at the lowest voltage. And now at the highest. Depending on the range of course. But this is temporary in this case, except when we move the random node to the right. Now it will stay overwritten. You can also shift the pattern around with the move buttons. By the way, the start of the pattern is indicated by the green LED or yellow in case the bit is active as well. But that's it already for the basic controls. In addition to the main output, we also got a noise output, which is just that, a handy noise source. And for the CV controls, we've got a CV input for the random knob, one for the move buttons, and one for the reset input. And the reset input is actually pretty cool if we use a clock divider. So if we send our LFO to the clock input and choose a divide output, divide by two in this case. So even though we don't have a length CV input, we can reduce the length with the reset input. All right, let's move on to the expanders. On the left, we've got pulses, and this outputs gate signals for the first seven bits. It also has logical end outputs for several of the bits, but let's just grab some drum modules and play around with it. I'll use the drum machine from VCV Rack, which is a paid module, but you can get it for like 30 bucks. But of course you can use any module you want. Let's add a mixer for a second. Input 1. Input 2. Let's mute the VCO for now. Well, let's take some of the outputs. Kick drum. Snare drum and a hi-hat. And I need to patch the mix output. And we can of course play around with the end output. So if we change the kick to output number two. Now the snare will only play at the same time as the kick drum. Or maybe we'll use the combined output and send that to a clap. Okay, well, you get the ID. And by the way, we can also right-click the module 
to change the logical AND to a logical OR. So we can play a hi-hat when either the kick or the snare are playing. Okay, cool. So on the right, we've got the faults expander. This is a five-step sequencer responding to the first five bits. And it works a little bit differently than a traditional sequencer because all the voltages are summed together. With all the knobs set to the same position, you would expect the sequence to play only one note. But since it's a sum of voltages, depending on which bits are active at the same time, you get a lot of variations out of just five steps. If I move the right button completely to the right and press the right zero button. Oh, and I'll just reduce the number of steps to five. Now if I press the one, you can hear the five steps. So if we lower this by 0.2 for example, Now all the five bits are turned on, so we can change the pitch of any of the bits. Okay, so this expander is pretty cool if we copy the quantizer and VCO. So I'll send this to the top VCO and I'll use the main output over here. So now we should be able to create some harmonies. Pretty cool. Now I just want to show you how it sounds like if you use a VCO instead of a LFO for the clock. I'm just gonna mute these two inputs and I'm gonna send the main output straight to the mixer. And I'll just reset the random knob to the middle and use the square wave output as a clock source. Now the scale output changes the level or the maximum output voltage. But now we get a really digital sounding noise source. But what's really cool is when we lock the signal, we get a oscillator. And the sound of the oscillator depends entirely on the random sequence. And if we move the random knob to the left, the sequence doubles, resulting in a lower octave. We can also play around with the VCO to change the pitch, but also the pulse width. And if we change the length, we can change the interval. Oh, I broke it. Alright, let's add some more modules and turn this into a cool ambient patch. Okay, so I'm back at our two oscillator patch and I'm sending the mix output to Clouds. And Clouds is going into another reverb by Search XT. The cool thing of this patch is that I'm triggering a grain on the 4 and 7 output. So Clouds is only triggered occasionally. I've got a feedback setup around halfway 
and a lot of reverb. So this really adds a lot of character to the sound. And of course you can play around with the quantizers as well. Maybe we want to reduce the amount of notes. Or we can tune the oscillators. Alright, that's it for this video. The Turing machine is definitely one of those workhorse modules and it is a must have for every ambient creator. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next week with another tutorial.